Welcome, everybody, to a new episode and series of Virtual Selling Live. Um, I'm your host, Kim Orleski, and I am so excited to be bringing you, number one, some of the best new speakers, some of the best new business uh, business development professionals, um, managers, directors, leaders, when it comes to talking about virtual selling. We're going to be hearing from those that are in the grassroots area, like how are they impacting their businesses? How are they teaching this to their sales teams, customer success, client development, client success teams as we go forward. Now, recently we saw some great things in the news and it was specifically around how are we creating better impact through messages that we had. Um, recently, I had a, a little personal uh, personal moment today. Um, it was a very sad moment. Um, the passing of a very good client um, happened uh, earlier on this week. Um, but what I want to share about that, and you can go ahead and take a look at my my recent LinkedIn post. Um, I'm gonna like get into a place where I'm gonna be bawling. Don't have, let that happen, Kim. Your mascara looks too good. Uh, but really, what it comes down to is go ahead and try something new. When it comes to whether you're direct messaging, when it comes to sending off other messages. Feel free to be funny. Feel free to try something a little bit different. I was having a lunch uh, yesterday with a potential client, and we were talking about getting in front of an account. Right? He says, I would love to get in front of this client. He's like, you know, he's like, I've done my research. I have found out where he went to school, how he might know some people that I know. He's like, and I have tried him. He's like, honestly, I have tried to get in front of him. And I understand how hard it is, that agony of desperately wanting to get in front of that account and not knowing what is the perfect thing to say in that respect. And in this case, I started thinking about all the research that he had done. I said, what if you tried something different? What if you tried something different? funny you know what have you said to him listen I know that you know when you're not here you're probably at your uncle's store get somebody to give you a, like a google street view snapshot why not go find it you tell him that you understand who he is or that in that particular local geography you know having fun going to the local tavern enjoy introducing yourself to the, some of the local people is some of the ways that you would interact I said at the end of the day one of two things are going to happen you're either going to get the exact same result that you've already gotten, which is no response. Okay. But maybe, maybe by trying something completely different, something not salesy, something that talks to the person as they are, as that person that interacts with that human being and saying, I know who you are. Maybe that will help set the difference out. People love to buy from people that are just like me. I know who you are. And it's that personal connection that can ultimately help us to have greater relationships, have understanding, ask those deeper questions, get the responses that you need in order to help sell more. And not if from a salesy perspective, but rather from a perspective of, I know who you are because we've done that research. Now, our next guest that we're going to be bringing on today, Wayne is from ATB Financial, and he knows entirely what it's like to have a personal relationship, to have those personal connections. Because when you think about the relationships you have with your bank, hmm, can anybody honestly say that they know who is on the other line? Can anyone say that when they have to call their bank, they're excited about that opportunity? We're going to be talking to Wayne. He's going to be giving us some insight on how we can ultimately get there. Uh, let's bring him on. Welcome, Wayne. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Good hey, morning, Kim. How are you this morning? I'm feeling very good. And yourself? I'm feeling awesome. It's a sunny day here in, uh, in Edmonton anyway, in Shore Park area. So it's a uh, <laughs> great day this morning. I'm excited to be here this morning. Thank you well, for well, thank asking. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, so tell, um, tell the viewers a little bit about you know, your role and how you have been impacting um, the banking industry, specifically with ATB Financial. All right. So, well, I've been banking for permanent my whole life. I'm a, 
I'm a farm kid from, uh, from up in Northern Alberta, but I've been now banking for 35 plus years and I've done a lot of different things, but business banking is kind of my, is my passion and what I love doing. And what I look after, I, I have the pleasure of leading uh, the small business space. And so that is pretty much when you look at uh, size of businesses and what, you know, we look at uh, the audience or anybody's in business uh, in, in a small business space, my in a segment is about 80% of our clients in, in, in the number side, in the number size of things is what's comprises of our business within ATB. And so from our perspective, we're trying to help support Alberta entrepreneurs here in the province of Alberta and how we can help support them. And uh, right now, of course, uh, with the pandemic, we've been very much involved in trying to help out with, of course, all the programs out there, uh, relief programs, trying to get everybody to sustain their operations uh, in the uh, during this difficult time. So our team has been very instrumental in trying to get those programs out, the capital out to entrepreneurs here in the market, in addition to helping provide that support uh, as we're going. So. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and I mean, you mentioned, you know, like, like the transition of the pandemic. How has yeah. this impacted your, your client success teams and the way that they are interacting with your clients? Well, I, that's, uh, that's, we've had to reinvent ourselves, right? Um, we know not just ourselves, but our clients as well. We all recognize uh, in banking, we've, uh, technology is obviously very important. If you're, you know, reading that that's the, where the money is being spent, that's where investment is, is in uh, our AI and data science and all that good stuff. And for ourselves, it's really what can we do differently to really help connecting with clients. For ourselves, it's about learning to connect with our clients virtually. Uh, we have a lot of our team members have been working out of their, out of their homes uh, or in places where they're not in, in, a, in a branch or in an office. And so we've been uh, really getting ourselves engaged with our clients to help them uh, what solutions we have in order for them to connect so they can do their banking because we've had to change the way we, we've connected with each other and also how we do banking. Maybe we're used to a certain way, but going forward, what, what do we need to do differently in order to keep our businesses operating in a, in a real good way? Yeah. So, uh, like, are you are you recommending that your team is like reaching out to your clients, like through through social media, through through LinkedIn? Absolutely. Yeah, we actually went through a LinkedIn uh, training for our entire team here. We've already been on a year of it, and all the way from you know how to set up your profile to how do you connect with uh, our clients and with um, with the community. And so we had to figure out ways of doing it differently. There's you know social media and just how do we network and that's yeah. the part that we are having you know it's like everybody else is trying to it's a it's it's a learning piece and i think we're still not quite there yet but uh that is it's a it's a journey for all of us and and how we kind of get about uh, moving that forward so yeah yeah is, is it is it creepy to be you know like like let's say you're working with a client and you're like checking them out on on linkedin or you're checking out their profile Oh, I, I think some have. I think I think some of our team members, I won't say have, but I think some of our team members who've never used the, the platform before yeah. are having experiences maybe they didn't expect. And I think, yeah. uh, you know, everybody has different experiences with it. And I think you just need to be able to understand what to expect and, yeah. and uh, kind of do what you can do to kind of, yeah. I guess, like, 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 work with it. Right? it, it, it like I mean, and, and from a client perspective, are they finding this like really weird? Or are they finding it like you know, like like I, I don't know if I would want my banker to like you know find out about my profile. What what would you say to somebody like that? Well, it's like everybody else. I mean, think about the banker. I mean, the banker is going to be probably your customer as well, possibly. <laughs> right? yeah. And uh, and that's the thing, right? I mean, we want to be advocating for each other. And uh, you know what? We know as as a banker. Uh, we're very proud of our clients. I mean, we want to see everybody be successful. So if we can help promoters each other and help support one another in whatever medium we can, uh, you know, uh, make that work, then absolutely. That's something that for us is important to connect. And yeah, I, th I think because we're learning, it's, it might be, there's that uncomfortable piece, right? But mm -hmm. um, for most part, I think uh, everybody sees us as, as a business as, as they are, right? So. Yeah. 
And what do you say to like the managers who are now seeing their their staff, you know, on social media for I don't hours, maybe in a day, right? Like like is that is that productive time? Yeah, that's that's a good point. And we we support it. We we want our team members to be able to be on it, but at the same time, um, there's obviously the ethical side of it, or the the side of the fact of what what you can do, what you can say, and I think that's that's interesting because um, we have you know we have uh, you know team members that have you know they have spouses and lives, and there's a lot of things going on in this world. Everybody's got an opinion, and I think sometimes everybody doesn't know what can I say or what can I not say, and there is that line, right? So that's that part is uh, interesting for sure so yeah yeah so where, where do you draw the line like what 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 was like what would you consider to be a non-negotiable like this you do not talk about um with with somebody through social media we're we're very careful like say po politics is obviously very important or any sort of you know, we obviously politics religion other things like that but we also want to be very supportive i mean it's this world we talk about diversity inclusion we want to ensure that everyone is you know we're we're we support uh everyone and the, the one piece that we you know we're also very careful about is you know making sure that when you're wearing the colors at any organization you want to make sure you're represented in a fair way and not controversial way but in a fair way and uh we do know that you know sometimes we can see from the news uh certain leaders business leaders make a state a position on a particular topic whatever that may be and sometimes that they may look back and say i wish i probably wouldn't have done that or have to understand the consequences of their of their decision yeah. right yeah yeah okay and and how do you see this this changing the way your clients are now going to interact with with your team members like are are we going to go to an entirely online model and get rid of every single you know brick and mortar branch well we're hoping we're not to i think we're still uh, committed to making sure we have places i mean trust me it's yeah. like we're just trying to wait for the day we're seeing uh get back out or seeing face to face we, we are obviously yeah. to a certain degree um but not to the same point uh, of comfort we have clients that are still yeah. not comfortable we have team members not comfortable it's right now we're all over the map um but i think that uh th this will be a new normal and i think we need to recognize how we're going to run our business going forward it's not yeah. you know are we going to see another pandemic or another outbreak well maybe we'll see another wave who knows but i think we need to recognize how can we how do we live in this type of uh, operate in this yeah. type of environment going forward right yeah and if you had to do you think you could like who you could go entirely virtual uh i would say absolutely yes uh we have done okay. it uh, we, have seen, <laughs> yeah. we have seen clients flourish in this environment and uh, yeah. the one piece that we need to really focus in on from our standpoint you know we talk about cybersecurity and talk about making sure that we know your client um there's reg yeah. regulatory you know know your client and so on so we need to make sure that you know there is the technology to help bridge that but at the same time nothing replaces the fact of seeing it for your own self whether you're yeah. out seeing a client's uh, place of business or look at a piece of equipment or whatever the case may be um it's really difficult but we we can do it it's just it's uh it's probably going to have to be something more that we do going forward than we have done in the okay. past okay and, and where will you draw the line like wh where does it become this has to be online or this makes most sense for us to have line this has to be in person what what does that look like for for you and your team well, a lot of it has to do with risk, right? Because at the same time, when you're dealing with, you know, we talk about our banking about clients where, how they want us to be served, like what channel. So do you want in your, we look at small business, time is so precious. And, uh, you know, we know that online technology allows us to do more, uh, spend more time, gives us more time back, you know, sort of driving a car, going somewhere and meeting, you know, in the banking, I gotta go see the lawyer, I gotta do this um when you can do it technology wise like you can you can save so much time uh and yeah. then there's time when you got to do a big deal uh you got to touch it you got to feel it you got to meet um there's times when you need to get more engaged with them face to face but i think going forward uh like we have team members that are helping clients uh, across the province or other yeah. provinces um you know we know the world is getting to be a lot smaller right and that that part yeah. is so critical we do it that way right yeah 
Yeah. And how is this changing the way you're finding uh, like hiring like people in that client success or even in that business development role? Are you are you looking for different skill sets than you may have been looking for two or three years ago? Oh, absolutely. Like technologies, like anything, even go back a few years, we are looking at what uh, sort of, uh, you know, how technology has been so important for them to understand certain applications, whether or not you're talking about, you know, you know, spreadsheets and using certain applications as well as less table stakes for us. But now all of a sudden we're talking about social media or just having an understanding of uh, the skills of communicating virtually versus that communicating face to face. It's uh, it's certainly a, 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 an art, I call it, an art of conversation of how do we connect with people in an effective yeah. way, right? And that's something we, we know that's something we need to continue to ingrain in the right people uh, that we bring in for our, bring on our yeah. team. Yeah. So, so would you're like, if I was to apply for a job today, would, yeah. would I expect to have somebody scouring my social media profile before an interview? I would say yes. And then <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I mean, yeah. we, we look at, we do a lot of things. I mean, we're, we're, we're using Google, we're using uh, social media. Uh, we're we're at we're at we're at an age where we can we try to get information wherever we possibly can. I think the key is is that sorting out the facts from fiction, right? And that's up to that individual to be responsible on how they use it. But I say power, you know, knowledge is power, right? It's it's making good informed decisions, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So so I can I can fully expect somebody's gonna check me out. I'm gonna fully expect that I'm gonna have to know a certain level of of social media. Right yeah. now, if I yeah. was somebody that came in and said, listen, listen, Wayne, that's not the way I'm used to doing business. I'm used to doing business with like, you know, shaking someone's hand, looking in their eyeballs to see if they're doing, telling the truth. And if you're going to hire me, that's how I'm going to approach my clients. What would you say to that? Well, I think that that uh, that we, we look at those individuals as uh, how are they able to be agile and adjust to the ways going forward? And we talk about uh, being fixed mindset or growth mindset. And we, you know, it, with our organization, growth mindset is the direction that we 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 really embrace as far as how we want our team members to be. And so, having a team member, uh, someone who who approaches it that way, I would consider more of a fixed mindset. This is the way I do it. I'm not open to learning any other way. And I've been successful doing it that way all my whole life. But you know what? It's not always going to be that way, right? You gotta, you gotta hope that you don't have there. Gotta be open minded, right? So. Okay, okay. So, so quick, quick thing is, unless you're open minded, you could say that. But listen, unless you're open minded, unless you're willing to be coachable, forget it. You're not going to get a call for an interview. That's right. You need, to, you need to be, you need to be agile, right? You got to be open. Yeah. Change, change is a, is a, something that happens, and you have to be open to change. Uh, that's, uh, I think, like I say that the, the uh, change curve continues to be very steep, and that's yeah. uh, something we need to to really embrace. Yeah. Yeah. And so, what are what are some of the skill sets? Like, if you if you look at what you've kind of trained over the last couple of years, social selling, yeah. learning how to communicate yes. a little bit better on on social media, getting your LinkedIn profile really set up so it looks professional, that it has you know the brand recognition behind it, right? You're the face behind the brand. What comes next for the next two years in skill development? Um, in our opinion, I think uh, networking, building your network. Um, you know, having a conversation with your existing clients, uh, connecting with some of the your centers of influence, but it's really how do you build your network? I think if you're out there or shaking hands, if you're going out to events, passing out business cards or sharing, uh, you know, digitally sharing your information, I think that is what we're used to in the past about building our, 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 our network. Now, all of a sudden, we are having to change how we connect with people and, and how do we get there. So that's uh, that's a way we think that's kind of the future of how do yeah. our team members do that. I don't think we we definitely haven't figured that out yet. We're trying okay. different things, but it's something we need to, to work towards. Yeah. 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 So, so perhaps like, you know, we're talking about like, you know, direct messaging, are we talking about like, you know, e-conferences e or like some of those like virtual environments, or are we like saying like, listen, let's go back to where, how we had it in trade shows that was so effective for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, we talk about the e like conferences and how do you connect? I know there's different technology being created in order to how to kind of create a kind of a similar 
uh, kind of an e uh, intros. Like I attended one the other, uh, well, probably yeah. six months ago now. It feels like yesterday. But like I say, you you actually had a you actually saw the room and you were you were a, you know, an emoji that was walking around and you'd sit at a in a, to a yeah. conference room and sit across from people and all of a sudden your faces would pop up. You know, on a on a camera that video, yeah. and it was almost like you're you can see yourself walking, kind of work in the room, and it was it was so different, but it was yeah. everybody was in the same place to learn, right? Yeah. And I think I think there's going to be some fintech companies that recognize the fact of how can they create an experience in a digital virtual way that's going to make it look feel differently or feel maybe something similar to face to face. Right. Yeah, yeah, and and are, do you do you think that the the areas like in some of these rural areas, right? Because like let's be honest, like ATB is right across the board, and there is yeah. a significant difference in feeling and in the idea of how willing are we to embrace technology or in like virtual connections. What where do you think that you know embrace on the rural side is going to? Be? Is it going to be significantly longer? Is it like is it slowly happening? Where do you feel like it's going to get to? Yeah, I think that uh, we're seeing more uh, uptake from rural. I think it's probably a little bit slower, possibly. Um, but I have to say that, uh, you know, if you look at agriculture, technology has been, it's huge, right? I mean, uh, where where we're at today compared to where we were five, 10 years ago, uh, technology, when you're looking at GPS and all the other uh, technology that's been introduced, um, it's out there and I think it's just that it's a new way of doing business. And I think it's just going to be a generational piece as well, uh, how we see yeah. that progress going forward. Um, but I think that it's, it's going to be driven for community or, you know, whatever you're looking at, it's, it's, it's going to be necessary for, for the entire, for everybody to be connected in a way that it brings rural into urban and so on. So. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I want to let people know, like, the chat is open if you have any questions specifically on virtual selling um, in, in the financial industry, in, in small business, in banking. Um, please go ahead and ask us um, as we go forward. Um, Wayne, what key tips would you give to somebody who is interested in, like, how do I embrace virtual sales in the in that financial industry or specifically in banking? Yeah, well, I think it's both is really to hone in on your skills, communication skills. And I think if you start thinking about your being present and, and kind of adopting some of those uh, skills that you have, knowing how to connect with people, I think you have to be your 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 skills have to even be even sharper in the side of social selling. Uh, it's because you have to be so perceptive over what sort of messaging and sort of impression that you're creating and when you're connecting. Sometimes we all know that, but I know from my standpoint, um, you know, forgetting any sort of, you know, uh, misunderstandings or so forth, uh, it's because of the lack of communication. It's a communication piece, right? And I think on the virtual selling side is that the, the way we communicate, um, you know, whether it's by phone, by email or, or video, whatever the case may be, um, I think that is probably one of the biggest challenges of how do you communicate effectively in a, in a written way, in a, in a verbal where you may be not seeing someone in a, in a video sense. But I think these are skills that we need to figure out how do we actually build relationships and create trust within that absence of some of those key parts that makes us like in a normal way face to face we can see and touch and and yeah. hear people it's different right yeah and we did get a, a question here um, from timothy thank you timothy he's saying what are some strategies you're using on the cold outreach how are you like what are you, what are you telling your team to do if they're reaching out to brand new prospects well i timothy i, I tell you that's something that we do not do uh, or don't do not do it's good good english it's something we don't embrace uh on the mm. side of calls uh we we support we call warm call programs and uh we we feel that we could be successful in embracing uh whatever tactics that we have in creating whether we use data and science to create those opportunities but we uh, feel that there's opportunities to really feel good about how do we connect with each other. It's always going to be those common grounds of how you connect in a network with other potential prospects. There's always going to be that common ground, which we consider the, it's a warm call versus that calling somebody that you have no idea who they are. Maybe you've done some research. Um, but in our business, 
we it's not that we don't do it it's just something that we don't probably promote as much as we probably uh, others other companies or other industries do yeah okay so uh thank you Wayne. real quick is virtual selling going away or is it here to stay it's here to stay i'm afraid it's here to stay and that's, that's the, the globe the globe is getting so small like our, our markets and it's going from a from a local level to national international i think for us to be relevant and to grow our business we have to go that direction that's it's yeah. it's critical absolutely and and be prepared people are taking a look at your profile right i think that was one of the big takeaways i took from today's conversation yeah, um you absolutely. know your your clients are looking at your profile your vendors your relationships your bankers are looking at your profile and if you're looking for a position in one of these companies make sure your profile is sharp showcase how good you are with social media by making sure your profile sh uh, shows that so that you're more likely to get to those conversations going with those people that you want to work with. That's right. Absolutely. Awesome, Wayne. Thank you so much. Where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me at uh, at uh, wkrizalk at atv.com or you can link me, send me a message on LinkedIn and I'll right, get right back to you. That's, uh, you can follow me there and uh, really look forward to connecting with anybody who uh, wants to chat. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, that was Wayne from ATB Financial. We are so excited. Every week we're going to be bringing on more guests as we go forward. Um, we're looking forward to seeing some of our about business coaching. Um, we're also going to be bringing on some other store where you can get some of the best swag available. Um, we also have uh, people coming on from everything from uh, valve fitting, specifically in the industrial manufacturing side, um, in the energy sector as we go forward, uh, pipeline um, development. If you are somebody that wants to be uh, on here to talk about virtual selling or how your business does or doesn't embrace it, I also want to hear from you. I am excited. Uh, listen, every week we host a show Thank you so much for devoting a part of your lunch hour with us today. I hope you go ahead and sell more faster. Thank you so much for seeing you in the future. Bye-bye for now.